Welcome to the Queen City Soccer Show. I am Level Up Luke. I am joined today by Sam Spencer from Soccer Sheet. Sam, how are we doing today? Doing quite all right. Hope you're doing well, Luke. Absolutely. And uh, I had the pleasure of, of going to the soccer tournament TST last weekend. And I understand that you have an exclusive interview that you would like to share with us and the listeners. Can you tell me a little bit about this uh, interview and, and how it all came about? Absolutely. So I have been, obviously, like everybody else in the soccer ecosystem, uh, following the Wrexham documentary and following Welcome to Wrexham last year. They were probably the biggest splash at the TST, at least in terms of fans who showed up to support a team. And that grew from there because the very next month, 20 miles away in Chapel Hill, you saw... Uh, a massive turnout, over 50,000 fans at Keenan Stadium for the Wrexham versus Chelsea men's friendly. Um, so this year at the soccer tournament, since they added the women's teams for the first time, the Wrexham Red Dragons brought over a women's team. And unlike their men's TST team, which, you know, is mainly made up of, you know, Wrexham legends, other players, a couple current players from the team, Current Wrexham women's players are the core of the Wrexham team um, that they fielded at TST. So I got a chance to talk with Del Morgan, uh, the goalkeeper, and Lily Jones, um, who's a midfielder for the team and also won the Young Player of the Year Award this year with uh, the Adirond Premier League, where the Wrexham women are playing now. And so in this interview, it's a, a good about 10 minutes talking to Dell about everything Wrexham and it's really indicative of just the the spot that the women find themselves in that they after earning promotion and being you know sort of international stars uh thanks to the documentary and being being on FX for um the better part of two seasons they're really um, it, it's just a, a great story in how humble um, all the players still are and how genuinely happy they are to have these opportunities. Like both, both Dell and, and Lily just were talking about how they saw fans who had their names on shirts. Um, and, you know, not even, not even a kit, but like literally just their names written out on shirts. Um, there were fans who were, there, you know, just to see them. There were women asking for their autographs. There were boys asking for their autographs. And as you'll hear from the interview, one of the things Dell told me was her visit to North Carolina was the first time she'd ever been in the United States. And so this TST visit um, comes before they do a big West Coast tour next month. Both the men's and women's teams are playing friendlies on the West Coast uh, throughout July. And as as you can tell, there's just so much excitement among the team and just the, I think, the highlight of TST for them. Even though the Wrexham women did not have a great tournament, they, they dropped all three of the matches, they still got to play against World Cup winners like Ali Krieger, and it was just... Um, it, it's really great to to hear like how amazing that an experience that was for those those players. A, a lot of things there that I, I totally agree with, and watching a few of their games at TST, I thought it was um, especially the U.S. women versus the Wrexham women's team. I thought that was a thrilling, thrilling matchup. So they acquitted themselves well. I think that TST having a women's bracket this year was very exciting, and there were eight teams competing and one of those teams walked away with a million dollars as a grand prize. Yeah. And the U S women team, um, actually competed in the men's division last year in the inaugural tournament. And their, their group included the Wrexham red dragons men. You know, the, the U S women has, has a, has a pretty long track record of playing against Wrexham. And it, I'd be shocked if they're not, you know, put in the same group again, Next year, I think it's a matchup that everybody's going to keep on looking forward to. Yeah, I completely agree. I I know that they like their storylines 
when they're uh, crafting the matchups, which is one thing that I, I really like about the tournament. Uh, Sam, thank you so much. Listeners, stay tuned. We have that interview right after the break here. This is the Queen City Soccer Show. I'm at LVLUP underscore Luke. This is at Soccer Sheet, Sam Spencer. And uh, Sam, we'll see you again soon. Thank you. Thank you, Luke. Today's episode of the Queen City Soccer Show is brought to you by SoccerSheet.com. Follow Charlotte FC and all Carolina soccer from the great journalists at SoccerSheet.com. Subscribe today. We are also sponsored by SeatGeek. For your next event, sign up for SeatGeek and use code QCSPOD for $20 off. That means Charlotte FC hosting DC United. That means Celtic playing Manchester City from Chapel Hill. That means any sporting event that you want to see, you can get the tickets on SeatGeek.com and use code QCSPOD for $20 off your ticket. Without any further delay, here is Sam Spencer's conversation with Del Morgan, the goalkeeper for the Wrexham Red Dragons at the soccer tournament. Take it away, Sam. Thank you so much for uh, giving me the time today. No problem. Happy happy to be here. I know it wasn't the result you wanted, but how was your first run in the tournament? It was a lot of fun. Um, obviously, we didn't win it, but you know what? We've, we learned so much about ourselves. It was a fantastic experience to play with some top-class football players who played at the highest level over here in the States. Uh, we've learned quite a lot of them. I, I was training with Carly Telford all week. Like, she's an absolute goalkeeping legend. So, like, that was unbelievable in itself. And then, obviously, playing against unbelievable players like uh, Ali Krieger, Ali Long, Heather O'Reilly. Like, you, nothing can, you can't replace that. It's just a really fantastic experience. And I've been saying, I've said it to a few people. Like, I absolutely love that here in America, it's different than to at home, that when a keeper makes a save. The Americans go mad. They love it when keepers make a save. I was at home. Everyone hates it when a keeper makes a save because they want the goals to be scored. Don't get the same cheers. So, it, yeah, it's really, really good, really good experience. Um, something I'll never forget. Wonderful. Well, I, you know, I, I wanted to ask you specifically, you know, how is defending the smaller TST goals different from, you know, standard football? I think it's harder than you think. I mean, people think you should like it should be easier being in smaller goals, but your yeah, angles are off. I had to tell myself not to move across the goal the same when the ball got shifted across the edge of the box. I, I didn't have to move as much because I was in a small goal. Um, so it's just getting used to the angles mainly. And like we prepared for it before the games, but like a lot of the shots you face are more close range, cutbacks, 1v1s, tapping. So you've got to deal with that. Whereas on 11 a side, you might have shots from further out. Just preparing for what type of shots you have to face, really. Yeah, and you don't have a linesman to rescue you if you miss it. No, no. And like a big thing I have to get used to is no offside. So I had people near, well, I think the winning goal, uh, the third goal for USA, she was right next to me when she scored it. And it, like normally she'd be miles offside. So that was getting taken, getting used to. So you mentioned that, uh, you know, Ali Krieger, Ali Long, what, what was it like playing against World Cup champions, players of that level? Unbelievable. Like not many people can say that, can they? Um, especially someone like me, who've never played professional football. And yeah, just to share the playing field with them is unreal. Because I, I, again, something I spoke to a few guys about, um, I love women's football in general. So I feel like I'm quite knowledgeable in women's football. So I've always followed like the USA team. Because like notoriously, they've been the best for years and years and years. So like watching Ali Krieg on TV and then play against her on the same pitch, that was pretty cool. Really cool. So were you surprised there were so many Wrexham fans in attendance? Um, I, you know, I was there for a couple of the Wrexham games last year and, and I was shocked. Um, I wouldn't say I was surprised. I think we knew we got, we got a really big following here because even at home, we feel and we recognise the following that we have over here in the state. So I'll play a game on a Sunday. I'll come back to my phone and I have loads of messages on Instagram or Twitter from American fans who, was, who had tuned in to watch our stream. Um, so it wasn't a surprise. It was just really nice to finally meet the people and to see it. Um, I, I seen one fan, of her, her and her mum have made a T-shirt with four of our names on it across the front. I've never had that before. Like Someone put my name on their top. Like That's, that's pretty cool. 
So just really quick on on a couple of non-tournament things, you know, the Ardenham Premier has been a obviously a harder league for the team, but but aside from the quality of play, you know, how has this year been different as semi-pros? It's been a lot more like we've had to step it up in terms of obviously step up our performances being in the league above um, because every game is a test, every game is a challenge, especially when you play the top the top team like our difference ones you can't just relax, you've got to be on it for the whole 90 minutes. Um, and in regards to the semi-pro status, some people have asked if it's and is it extra pressure. I wouldn't say it's extra pressure, it just we just have to raise our standards both on and off the pitch. So we all have to make sure we look after ourselves away from football. Um, so we all work, or some of them are still in school and uni. Um, so we, like I, I work full time, so I have to make sure that I manage my working life, um, making sure I'm doing the right things during the day to prepare myself for training, so that I can train the best and then prepare myself for the Sunday. Because it, it, it is added. I guess you can say it is added pressure, but I'm not someone that personally feels it. Um, but we just all hold ourselves more accountable for stuff, um, and then, and we know that if we don't, if we don't commit to it and we don't perform or we don't put the effort in that we require, then it could all be taken away. Like I could not, you could not get offered a contract one year, so you've just got to step it up. If you love it, you've got to do your best to keep hold of it. Absolutely. Where where do you want to be in the next couple of years? Women's Champion League, Welsh National Team. Uh, you know what? What are you aspiring to, Del? Um, I want us to win the league and I want to play in the Champions League. Um, personally, where I am with football now, I've I played for Wales in the youth age groups. Um, personally, I know that I won't play for Wales again at my age. Um, I'm okay with that. Um, but I say the get the next thing on my ch- football checklist is to play in Champions League. So winning the league first, and then that'll give us the opportunity to play in the Champions mm-hmm. League. And with with your tour next month, have have y'all ever been to California? Anybody on the team? Uh, I think maybe Lily. Lily went. Um, she had something on with Kevin and Ryan last year. Um, it was, I think it was on the documentary as well. Um, but in regards to any of the players, I mean, they might have gone on a holiday, but no one done anything like we're about to go. Like we're out in North Carolina now, and this is the first time I've been to the states. Never mind anywhere else. Um, so yeah, we're all really excited for for the preseason tour, but also no, we're in it's. We got to meet. We got to remember, like it pre season, so we're there to work hard, um, and it's going to be even harder in the heat as well. Because we've had to adapt to the heat this week. It's probably going to be a different now, uh, a different level in LA. Clearly, well, um, I, I don't want to take up too much of your time, so uh, you know, yeah. I, I really appreciate it. Just wanted to to end on, you know, it it has been such a huge year for women's sports um, <laughs> in the states and across the world. Uh, we're not even halfway through the year. Um, you know, what does the massive growth and popularity of women's soccer, women's football mean to you? I think I think it's that it's generally the most fastest growing sport in the world. Women's football, women's soccer is the fastest growing sport in the world. And I think um what I love about it this year more so than other years is that you're not just getting the young girls wanting to come and see you play, getting your autographs, I'm getting young boys come and see me and they the lads want my goalie gloves or they want my football boots and like they're supporting you every week. So I think that we're just um, inspiring a whole generation of people, not just girls. And long may it continue. It's only going to keep going up. It's just going to keep getting better and better. Thank you. I, I appreciate your time tonight. Thank you so much for talking with me. No, thank you. Nice to meet you.